very good morning to you all. Hope you're doing well. We've got the last uh, bulletin for this week because I'm away Friday. I'm away Monday. So do be aware that I'm away on those two dates. And it's a long weekend for me. So it, I'm quite looking forward to it. It's a, last time I had a break was Christmas. So <laughs> probably a little bit overdue. Um, so the risk calculation we were on, uh, across the 24 hour difference and at the risk, uh, the big picture, is we had a spooky value there, but we can ignore that. Interestingly, uh, the stop loss cluster for Aussie USD is uh, 666 as well. So that's the largest stop loss cluster, but we'll get there when we get there. But there's just a strange uh, duplication of that number. <laughs> um, but VIX has been to subdued and uh, it's, we're not above the yearly pivot, so that's risk on. And uh, the bubbles have moved a lot since I've done this bulletin. It takes an hour to do, so we see a lot of development on the bubbles. So it's a good idea just to get a spare monitor and just check the progress on those because they move a lot. And they're moving a lot more nowadays than they used to. Two years ago, they used to move quite uh, subtly. They're now being quite erratic, so I think they're trying to get the retail guys out of the equation. And the risk on... Uh, sign here because the yields uh, they sunk at the uh, short dated but the long dated they they rose but ideally we wouldn't want them to rise too much but the fact that these are coming down and that's going up stationary ish then that's gonna uh, you know it's gonna tell us that we're gonna have a, a steepening so basically we want low numbers here like here and we want high numbers here so we can uh, we're getting a diagonal not a curvature like this it's not healthy we want a nice straight diagonal and that's going to be risk on and then we'll be all-time high on the S&P okay so the big picture is that this is a bit out of whack so this is a bit risk off this is pointing towards risk on but it needs to continue okay this needs to continue this to happen has to happen every day and then it should normalize all right uh, set an alarm for 26.5 on VIX. So whenever that does uh, alert you, then you know you're going to be risk off. Because that's a really good little uh, tip there. So as long as we're holding below 26.5, we should be quite risk on. Okay. Uh, Euro pound, uh, you know, sell. Uh, you would see that on the bubbles, which I'll show you. S and P, you know, notable green and dollar Swiss is a red, but it's quite like a light red. So I show you Euro pound uh, when we get there. That needs to change, that why. And uh, dollar is un, uh, you know, under a bit of pressure. If there's anything that's going to be a weak link, it's going to be the euro. But we know why, because of the fundamentals and that gas pipeline issue. So if somehow that gets resolved, then you know the, the dollar will be under pressure. Because it's currently the euro is softening and it's helping the dollar a little bit. But you see the pound is like it's rallying. And possibly, possibly because the new prime minister is going to be good for the pound. If we get um, Sunak, that's going to be good because he's got banking experience. So that could be economically good for the country. So the pound could do well on, with this new PM. Um, so there's pound and euro. So you would have seen the FXCM thing I just showed you just there. And there's the euro pound uh, currently down as expected because of the bubbles you know that's how you use the bubbles and we'll show you this every day and you see how you can see uh, setups using the bubbles and uh, you know if they don't pan out I'll just I will say here but they're normally when you have a strong versus weak that's normally a uh, good indication for a setup and so euro pound is short as the play today um, this is how we stand today so uh, that's probably a little bit out of whack. The FXCM is a little bit out of whack with EJ, I think, because um, we've got the short signal in uh, Discord. So there's currently a buy at FXCM. So there's a little bit of a mismatch there with my FX book and FXCM. So be careful with EJ. Uh, S&P sentiment, so I don't know if you can see that actually. Maybe I'll need to zoom in. Uh, and I've got some uh, work going on in the, like in the field next door uh, so you know they had some fear and so uh, what happened they sold it we could see they sold it and they continued to sell it we came up and what's going to happen is that we're going to have some kind of diagonal test where we're going to break this diagonal and then it's going to cement the fears and then they'll sell it at that break that's my theory and it's very likely that's going to happen uh, let's go back to normal 
and uh, US 30 so we made a buy uh, but it's kind of close to the you know the 21 moving average so we want them to continue the only way that you can see if it's going to continue or not is to get the FXM trading station all right if you don't then the next time you're going to see this is tomorrow morning and a lot of things can happen in 24 hours well in fact you won't see this until Tuesday because I've got tomorrow and Monday off so do get a copy of the trading station this is going to change a hell of a lot by Tuesday you know this is going to probably be invalid by Tuesday uh, German 30 so they they bought the dip which you know you can see price action it, fa it doesn't favor their positioning if they continue to go long we will fall so you know that's that gold uh, risky buy from yesterday at 827 and today at nine o'clock 24 hours later <laughs> you know what happened they sold it and so we came up um, you know, just that's just one of those things. It happens all the time. So uh, come and join us if you want. And it's quite respectable price. It's not expensive. It could be a hell of a lot more because the information provided is very, very powerful. So uh, you know, you should learn quite a lot by joining us. And uh, today's stop uh, stop loss clusters and liquidity targets and the largest stop loss clusters AU at six six six. All right, that's what I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. That's where the stop loss cluster is, uh, and uh, the size is 3.14. Okay, and uh, that's that. So it's a bit spooky. We had a duplication of that number, but you know, just uh, superstition, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, after the 1st of September, the promo code is going to revert to 10% discount. I would lock in an annual plan if I were you, and then you can lock it in at that price. If you don't, you're going to have to pay $31 a month. Or you can pay down ten dollars, and I put something out in Discord, uh, looking at the gold, the gold order book, and it pays for itself. You can look at the ratios, and uh, you know you see how you can profit using the indicators. So do get a copy of that, and um, get the annual plan as well. Uh, they're getting squished, which is good for us. The retail guys are getting absolutely squished on yen, and so they um, they decided to buy cross yen. Uh, which makes yen a buy of course and the yen bubble is getting larger and it's gravitating down um, there so it's very large right and it's performing quite well today you can see because of the size and if we carry on down it's going to be strong buy so it's going to be very interesting when that happens um, that's fine patience now dollar cad netted us a minus 42 pip loss yesterday uh, but we had FMC with you know inflation pressures, oil, the gas into Europe, which is causing CAD to wobble and strengthen, because Europe are, are potential customers to Canada. If Russia completely cuts off the gas supply, Europe are going to have to rely on Canada, and uh, so the CAD's going to appreciate in, in value. So there's a lot of fluctuation on CAD. So be careful. Uh, fundamentally, CAD can be very strong. So, uh, but yeah, we and then we've got the the USD component as well, which is like risk on, risk off sensitive. So, very tricky, uh, and then that resulted in a loss. So this week it's going to be negative, I think, unless our current signal is going to perform incredibly well, and um, we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. I'll have to tally the data when I come back on Tuesday, because I'm going to be completely away. Uh, just so you know. Technical checks, uh, check the summary on the daily. Similar neutral, we wouldn't be getting a Euro USD signal. Pound USD, we might get one if it goes to strong buy. We might get dollar yen, potentially. This is interesting. That's really moved. So you get the logic. We only get strong buy or strong sell. Economic calendar, GDP. Now they know that the GDP is going to be rubbish, so they've got Yellen to speak after the GDP release, and she's going to try and spin the rubbish data. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be effective. It might be. She used to be very good when she was chair uh, in calming the markets, so, so perhaps it will work. Um, but just be careful. And being incredibly careful, lots of sharks out there. Keep going, always trade safely. So I'll speak to you guys on Tuesday. And um, I will wrap up now because it's slightly longer than I wanted it to be. It needs to be quite quick, these videos. So lots to digest. Get a copy of the train station. If you don't, then you're doing yourself a disservice because it's unbelievably amazing. <laughs> right, so do get it. And if you don't, 
I'd like to know why, maybe. If you could tell me why you wouldn't get it, then maybe I might understand. Um, but it's really amazing. And that's it. So I'll wrap up now. And I'll speak to you guys on Tuesday. So uh, be careful with the Euro Yen. It should do well, but we'll have to wait and see. And note that the German 30 has tipped as well. So that probably will impact the EJ currency pair. All right, so I'll speak to you soon. And have a good weekend. And I'll speak to you on Tuesday.